Hello and welcome to the final part of our Pether workflow mini series. In the last episode, we built two different grooms of our character right here. One traditional groom for the wing and a less traditional, more procedural way to create the main plumage. And in this case, on this video, I'm going to take the main plumage in here and add a vellum simulation onto it. This is where we left off last time. This is our main procedural groom. And first of all, I want to take the last three nodes, those nodes right here that create a full resolution groom in the end. And I just want to move them to the side, something like this. And I want to start off at this point in our setup and use this low resolution geometry to finally create a vellum simulation. This is low res, but it's still a bit too high res for a simulation in my case. For this, again, I'm going to use another feather resample node. Again, I'm going to buy in all three inputs and on this feather resample node I want to resample the shaft and the barbs and I want to bring down the shaft count to four and the barb segments to one. Now these are all polylines. In the end I want to use a vellum cloth simulation so I should turn them into a surface and for this we have a feather surface node. We have all three inputs in here and we got a feather mesh but right now this is looking quite chaotic. This is because the shaft width is set to a default value of one which we don't want. In our case we want a value of 0 0.005 like this and now this looks a lot more orderly. If you take a look at the info panel what this node also gives us is a point group called roots, which is great because this is something we can later use as pinpoints in our vellum simulation. Let's set up this. Let's drop down a vellum cloth node. Our main surface goes into the first input, the second output of our path surface node. The skin output goes into our collision geometry. And on my vellum cloth, I want to set up my pinpoints group. Again, this will be the roots group. And I also want to up the bend stiffness a bit to a value of of 0.001. Then this can go into a vellum solver and I want to build a very simple setup here. I basically just want to go into the forests tab and up the built-in wind into a speed of 5 in the x direction. Let's see what this gives us. Let's hit play on our timeline and let's maybe change our view. And yeah, we got some nice wind going on on a feathers. Now there are some feathers acting a bit weird. I could go back to my feather deintersect node up here and start tweaking values, see if this fixes things. However, in this case, I'm just going to leave this as is. The final thing that I want to do here is I want to bring the simulation that I did here. I want to bring this back onto a full resolution feathers. Let's move them back a bit. And the node that we can use for this is a feather deform node. Let's wire all three inputs in like this. Let's set the deformer type from feathers to surfaces and let's bring in first of all our static surface into the fourth input and then our animated feathers into the fifth input. And now as we can see we got the same simulation, the same animation on our full resolution feathers in the end. And still our shading is also working. Let's jump back to frame one. Let's move our UV quick shade node to the side and let's finally bring this into karma. For this let's drop down another null. Let's again call it guides and we're done here. And this is our node tree in the end. Let's set our desktop from build to Solaris thrown into an empty stage context. And let's first of all bring in all our geometry using some sub import nodes. Let's bring in our character. And this is under our char object or file object. And let's call this node char to make it appear as char in here as well. Let's bring in another sub import node, bring in our guides. In this case, I'm just going to worry about our similar procedural groom, you could bring in the manual groom, the wing feathers in just the same way. So from our groom B object, let's import the guides object. And let's call it guides. Now a feather system inside Houdini 20 also includes a feather procedural for karma so that a feather geometry, the geometry that will be rendered, will be built at render time, not in a viewport, again to make our setup a whole lot faster. However, this needs some additional setup. First of all, in our scene graph tree, we need another primitive, which will later become our groom object. We can create this quite simply with a primitive node. We can give this node a name, for example, proc for procedural. And let's make the primitive kind a component like this. Now, this is in our scene graph tree here as well. Let's finally create a feather procedural. For this, we need to drop down a Houdini feather procedural node. Well, then 
and the procedural prim will be our empty proc object and the guides will be our animated guides and our curve zero in here. Now in theory, we could also use a deformer in this node. So basically a vellum sim to deform our barbs at render time as well. However, this is something that I just couldn't get to work right. And again, if you have the right solution for us, please tell us in the comments. Now we're still not seeing any feathers and this is because this is a feather procedural. This is built at render time. If you want to take a look at it in the preview viewport right here, we need a Houdini preview preview procedurals note for this. Let's drop down a preview Houdini procedurals note. We add this in, wait for it to cook. And now we have our feathers on our object. We should give our feathers a material. So let's drop down a material library. Let's jump inside and let's bring in a karma material builder. Let's call this feathers. Let's also quickly assign it to our feathers. So we'll hit auto fill materials here. Let's click assign to geometry and drag our procedural object into here. And then to quickly see what we're doing in the viewport, we need also some lights. So let's use the new karma physical sky node for this. Let's fire this in. Let's change our view maybe to some something like this, save our scene. And now let's jump into the new Karma XPU viewport. And let's also maybe up the intensity or the exposure of a Karma physical sky node. Let's try a value of two. And yeah, this is looking better. Or maybe 1.5 like this. And now let's take a look at our feather material. Let's jump into our material library. Let's jump into a feathers object. And this is the new version of the Karma Material X subnet. And in here we have as a default the Material X standard surface. That's however not what I want to use. I want to use a Karma hair node to shade my feathers. Let's wire add this into the surface output and let's get rid of a Material X standard surface. And let's work on the parameters here. This is of course something where you can go into a ton of theory. I want to just build a very simple setup here. First of all, I want to bring the melanin level down to zero to make our feathers white so we can use a texture later instead and i want to go into the diffuse tab and bring up the diffuse level to make our feathers a bit more opaque in this case it shows a value of 0.5 and now i can bring in my texture for this let's use a material x image let's pick our file name again let's quickly make sure that we're using the aces 1.0 workflow that is now a default or already built in in houdini 20 and let's set a file color space to sRGB texture like this. And now this goes into our base color and also into our diffuse color. And we should see the texture appearing on our groom. And this is basically everything I have to tell you about feathers. This is how you can create feathers, how you can groom feathers, how you can simulate them and how you can finally render them in Karma. If you want to use a different render engine that doesn't support those feather primitives, you of course just have to convert your feathers to standard geometry using a feather uncondensed node. And then this should work with Octane and Redshift and so on as well. So this is it for today. This is it for the feather workflow in Houdini 20. We have some other videos covering some smaller topics as well. And until next time, it's cheers and goodbye. And if you like us and want to support us or just want to learn more about Houdini and, and of course, consider becoming a patron of ours. And to everyone already supporting us, thank you so much. And Tagma in this form would not be possible. With a special thank you going out to Mohamed Alabri, Mumumia Ichigo, Joseph Horton, and David Aiden. Thanks so much, guys.